Good afternoon, Dr. Kotek. Good afternoon. I am very glad to have an opportunity to following the Comet 1973F during its most critical day, during its perihelion passage, and from the place where most research of that comet is concentrated. Especially it is a great pleasure for me to greet you, Mr. Gibson, Mr. Kerr and Mr. Pork, as the first human beings studying a comet from outer space. Your mission is indeed uh, very important for astronomy. I have uh, the following uh, questions. Uh, you observed the comet visually last Sunday and Monday. You compared it with, uh, in brightness with Mercury and suggested that there were color features in the coma. Do you have anything more to say on those observations? Uh, not too much to add to that, sir, because uh, we have not seen much of the comet visually since those last observations. Uh, the one time in which I was the one who observed the color, uh, I have not seen the comet since. Uh, the next time I saw the comet was uh, on the uh, SO-52 white light coronagraph. Yes. Oh, yes. And how about the tail, for example? Uh, the tail we have found, uh, as it becomes more foreshortened uh, to us, uh, became much wider. And uh, uh, let me uh, let me give you uh, figures that are uh, relative to the display we have on the ATM. I would say that the uh, the coma, the bright coma, was approximately uh, three sixteenths, one eighth to three sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And. Um, I would say that the tail that we could see, however foreshortened, uh, extended only about one quarter inch away from the coma and uh, spread like a fan to uh, approximately three-eighths of an inch at its out, uh, outermost end.